Hi guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. We're back in the studio for another video. I'm going to be breaking down this fire sort of deep melodic guitar beat I made. Like a UK drill feel to it, got some cool vocals. I can easily hear Central C on it. It definitely reminds me of Hard Shoulder. That's kind of like where I was kind of getting the inspiration from, which is his new track produced by Young Cheng. So it's going to be full of gems, so make sure you stick around for that. But before we get into this one, actually, I want to let you guys know the beat battle contest will be taking place that is what everyone's voted for on the youtube community tab so what i need you guys to know is you need to download at the link in this description of this video there is a free sample pack it's on my website it says three free samples it'll be like a jaleb contest loops or something go ahead and download those you'll have to just put your email in and it will send you the loops make a beat with one of these loops chop it flip it however you want you can only have one submission as well you're going to want to submit your stuff to the email on the screen here and it will also be left in the description by this deadline that's also on the screen giving you guys at least a week from the time you see this video all the winners prizes and stuff will be detailed on the screen so you guys can kind of get an idea for what you win if you came first or became a runner up second or third place there may also be some extra prizes too but yeah it's a sick opportunity. I know when I started out making music, I didn't have a lot of funds to get these really cool uh, VSTs and effects rack stuff. Really actually help level up your production games. This is a great opportunity to kind of show your skills. Make sure you go and download those samples and uh, let's get into this tutorial. All right guys, so the first thing we're gonna get into is the guitar melody. So I've got the Les Paul and Ilya Efremov here. Um, haven't really changed much of the settings or anything. And this is the MIDI I went with, so I'm going to play it and I'm going to break down sort of how you can go about achieving this melody. Whilst it's simple, sounds really realistic and has that kind of deep feel that Cold Shoulder has, so... So, quite simply, I'll show you how you come up with these pretty easily. So I'm going to go through into a different pattern here. I'm going to show you sort of how you can come up with it just using simple triad chords and then just I'll sort of detail how you can kind of make it feel more real and stuff. So let's start with the D triad that I started with before. Let's go down one octave here. What we're going to do, so that's inverted one octave down. The rest of the chords are going to be up here. If you just play on its own, like the chords all at the same time, it, it just sounds like this. It's okay, but it's not great. If we move them over a half step ahead of each other, so we go into the magnet link, have it on half step, you can start with this. So now we're kind of getting there. So that's a pretty easy way to kind of look at it, just moving stuff over a half step, and we've just added one extra note here, and that's going to span like that. And then if you want to add that emotional feel, what you can do, like for example, we're just going to move the root note down and I'll show you sort of what a mood, how it changes the mood a little bit more. So we can add like a little melody that passes here. This, so you'd shift these. So right now it doesn't sound right, but if we just add some extra notes here, like this. So that's sort of how you start to build up um, an idea for a realistic one. So what you're kind of looking at is just long elongated chords and maybe a little melody here and there. I think with the previous one what I did was I shortened this C, put a C here and then I went up to the G like this. I think it was even just on the last half E like this. Which is kind of the same sort of vibe and then what I would do at the end is I'd have like an articulated played part so what we're doing here is basically I was cutting it sort of here and then I was re-staggering the notes and then same here basically that's sort of what we what we were doing you just take that there what I just showed you and then you just can replicate that and then that's the sort of simplicity of the melody but now I'm going to show you some effects I actually put on the guitar itself so as you can see here at one point I had a lot of different effects on but the one the main one that I would notice the reverb it in 
instantly adds more of an atmosphere. Um, what I've done is I've added a bit more dry, turned that early reflection up a bit and added a bit more wet. We've cut the low so we don't have a lot of low frequency reverb because we don't want that to clash with the drill 808. That really changed things up here and I also had like a, a delay where it would basically be on an automation here and it would play, which I'll show you now, like this. And then from there I ended up going ahead and EQing it a little bit, just taking one of the sort of low uh, bassy frequencies in the low mids there and I compressed it as well to just reduce the dynamic range so some of the volume is a little bit more uniform so it ended up sort of sounding something like this and then the EQ without so that's for it wouldn't without the drums so it ended up working out really nicely so those effects are quite important especially the reverb and delay if you're trying to create that sort of atmosphere from there i actually went into arcade to just grab like a simple vocal melody um, you can use other stuff though you can use samples just off splice or something or um, exhale so yeah we're basically using the perception bank here i've got it keyed up to d minor pitched up 1200 and we're just using these two notes here so i'll let you hear what these sound like on their own first So you kind of get an idea for that. So then in context, it sounds like this with the guitar. Simple but fire really works well. What I ended up doing was rendering and basically replacing the uh, guitar and stuff into a waveform and I'll show you why. So here with these guitars we've got them EQ'd here uh, but what I wanted to do is basically create two versions. One that's panned right as you can see here and then make the one below unique and then pan it left. So now we've got more of like a full stereo feel from the guitar so it hasn't got to be as loud and prominent so um, that's just basically something I did I felt like it would really help. So now we're going to get into the drums. So first thing I did here was I started off with a snare so I'll sort of show you it's a pretty standard pattern and using this snare from Fabo I've turned the out right up I wanted it to have no real tail after that we added some counter snares so these counter snares and I'm going to just quickly explain how you can kind of achieve this like a lot of people will do like the standard drill pattern where it's sort of like I'll just show you like this basically a lot of people do that but you know um, and a good way to kind of make it seem a bit different is you can randomize the hats or you can just move this across here a quarter beat and turn the velocity right down and it adds that kind of like delay feel that kind of more fluttery feel so that's sort of what I've done there like I haven't really done much much sort of stuff other than that just very simple sort of ta 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 da 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 So those two in context sound pretty good together. And then from now I thought I'm gonna add a kick. Now this kick is really prominent um, and I just really like using it. So this is it here. So that's kind of, you can kind of feel that vibe straight away. So if I was to play it. So then the last thing we kind of come in with here was the 808, so. And one thing I'm making sure I have is breaks between each 808 so then it has more significance like it punches back through again. Um, and yeah, that's sort of what I've done there. I mean, I could probably use a more dirty 808 but I'm just kind of sort of keep it neutral, not too heavy. I'll play you sort of how all the drums sound together. And then in context with the guitars panned either side. I'll break that down I just want to break down some effects that really just come in handy to give the drill vibe and all that sort of stuff 
So the first thing we're going to sort of go over is this section before we get the proper drop. So as you can see here, we've got no drums. We're just playing through and then I've basically cut everything out bar the snare. I've manually added some kicks here in the, if I go to the magnet link just to show you. On the last three beats there, we've got an FX riser, another FX riser, another FX riser and my tag. So basically, just take the tag out. I want you guys to just listen to the effects alone and sort of see how it all builds up an atmosphere and then I'll do it in the context of the song. Makes it feel like something's gonna happen, right? So then when we put it in combination with this eight bar section where there's been no 808, I put the 808 slide that's at the end of the eight bar section that I just showed you in. So I'll play this eight bars and you'll see how all the effects kind of move to make that moment seem much more important when the 808 properly drops. I think that's really important for the drill beats. The drill beats, they need that kind of suspense and that, that build up um, because sometimes the core patterns and stuff, they're pretty simple. So they need that sort of, um, the effects kind of come in clutch. And another really good one is just this flare from uh, Pro by Jack's drum collection. I just put a bit of delay on that. So yeah, that's pretty much the beat. I'm gonna show you just some structural stuff really simply now. So we're sort of looking at this section here where we loop round. And what we've got, first eight bars, just the guitar no EQ on it, so it sounds nice and full. Then we come into the next eight here. Now this is like a uh, kind of slow build up. We, we bring in the 808 in the first and fourth bar just to kind of, you know, let it know there's an 808 sort of thing and then no kind of fancy stuff. And we bring in in the latter four, these counter snares. So we kind of get like a, a start of a build up here. And one thing I noticed about a lot of Sentry's beats now, he likes to kind of drag out the drop before it comes in. So I literally, instead of after the first eight, putting in the air away, I waited another eight and create that more, more of that suspense. And that's obviously where those rises and those kicks kind of come in to really bring the drop in. So um, we're just trying to keep it nice and abstract in the first sort of 16 bars. So that's the end of the video from me. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Hopefully you learned a few things when it comes to these deep guitar melody drill beats and kind of how simple you can keep them, how the structuring certain things really helps. But uh, if you guys enjoyed it, make sure you smash the thumbs up, hit subscribe, all that good stuff. Keep supporting, building this community here. I'm really appreciative of you guys. And don't forget, you know, if you're a producer that needs new VSTs, needs new effects racks, all that stuff, you can get that by just downloading these three free samples at the link in the description and entering our beat battle contest. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it from me. I'll play you guys a quick preview of the beat and I'll catch you in the next one. Yo, Jaden, send it back.